Today, I'd like to introduce you to a man that maybe few of you may know, but most of you have enjoyed his incredible talents for years now. He's David Wu. He spent more than four decades as a decorated photojournalist with the Dallas Morning News. He's covered Super Bowls, World Series, NBA championships. He photographed the mass emigration of thousands of Cubans to the United States in the boat lift of 1980. He photographed the Olympics in Seoul, the front cover of Tom Landry's autobiography. Yes, a David Wu photograph. He sent us photos of the effects of war on children in places like Nicaragua and Honduras and El Salvador. That iconic image of Nolan Ryan releasing the pitch that was about to be his 5,000th career strikeout, that was shot by David Wu. He took the Bush family photos in the White House. He's been embedded in an Iraq war zone next to his son, Sergeant Jake Wu. And he's won the Pulitzer Prize for photojournalism. David, thank you for joining us. But because your introduction is so long, that's all the time we have for you. <laughs> I just wanted people to know who they were listening to today on our podcast. First of all, welcome, David. We really appreciate your time and look forward to talking to you. Thank you. Dave here. I'm going to ask a phone dummy question of mine. Okay. Over the last few years, digital's become a rage. iPhone's become a rage. We've now got an iPhone 15, and in 20 years, we'll have an iPhone 45 out there. Yes. Has all this made people think photography's easy? Yes, uh, I agree. I mean, like, I used to shoot stock from a photo agency in New York, and about 15 years ago, it just dropped off because uh, Getty and these other people were setting up websites where soccer mom can send in her photos off an iPhone. And it was very successful. And, and all these people that are not professional, they're making money off of their images from iPhone. Is there someone early in your career that you looked up to that made you want to be a photographer? Yes. Uh, there's a very famous studio photographer portrait named Frank Criccio. And when I was in 11th grade, he let me work for him for half a day. And then he gave me a full-time job, uh, I think for two summers. He taught me how to develop film, studio, lighting. And he's the one that took me to my high school football game. And he said, hey, why don't you try it? I said, okay. And I didn't know it until the last minute. He picked my image over his. And it ran in the port off the news the next day. And when I saw my name, this is my career. <laughs> <laughs> How does one get asked to be the White House photographer for the Bush family? Well, I actually asked him about it the night he, he ran, right? And I said, um, I said, Governor, uh, I know you're going to run for president, and I know you're going to win, and I'd like to be your photographer. And then that's when he pulled back the curtains and the capitals in the background. He goes, no, Woozy, my nickname he gave me. I'm going to serve the state of Texas. I said, okay, but I know you're going to win. Let's shake hands, and let's have a deal if you win. He goes, okay. And... That is how you got to get those iconic photographs. Well, that's be, all of my photos of him happened uh, like before he ran for president. I mean, I, I was with him on election night, but uh, I couldn't move to Washington, period. Uh, yeah, there, came there were those photographs with he and his father, yeah. and his mom, and, and the Bush family dog. Yeah. Incredible images. But thank you. Um, it, you photographed an enormous number of sporting events. 
right. huge ones. Is there one photograph you've taken in sports that stands out for you? Yes, it's probably my most successful image to give to charity is the Nolan Ryan's 5,000 strikeout pitch. And I think other people had it from the uh, side, but they didn't have the ball. Somebody had it in the outfield. But I was standing behind the home plate, like the second tier up. I'm shooting through a net, and it's the best angle to have it. I got lucky. I was luck. Look, taking the motor drive as you see, you know, 10 frames a second. You couldn't wow. miss. <laughs> <laughs> you, you covered the 1991 Delta airplane crash at DFW. Right. You've been at the aftermath of tornadoes. You've been in war zones. You covered the siege of the Branch Davidians. How do you deal with the sadness a human being must feel as you're going through your job of photographing that? Right. Well, I remember when I got the phone call to go to the airport, and, you know, I've seen other photographs of plane crashes and video. I didn't know what to expect. So... I don't know. I just showed up and just went in auto auto mode and just started shooting. But I had to be like the picture that's in the book shows a, a security guard a policeman standing in front of the plane and that the plane looks like a dead bird. And it, to me, it was very dramatic looking. Uh, but yes, they were, you know, covered up bodies and everything. But I just I didn't pay attention to that. I just and then planes were taken off in the background. I went, that's a picture. You get one that's unfortunately crash and you got one flying in the background so I, I look for these things to make the image more interesting we'll have more with photographer david Wu in just a moment are all financial advisors fiduciaries fewer than you think not knowing could reduce your lifestyle hi i'm mitch kramer founder and ceo of fluent financial a fiduciary is a regulatory term to reduce conflicts of interest in wealth management a fiduciary always works in your best interest. A non-fiduciary advisor might put their compensation or company head of yours. At Blunt Financial, we are certified financial planners acting as fiduciary advisors. To learn more, go to FluentFinancial.com or Fluent Financial's YouTube channel. David Wu, we've talked of the sports photography history you've been a part of. Is there one image from a news story? from a war, from, from wherever. Is there one that stands out for you? Well, Norm, there is one. It's uh, it's the last image of my book, and it's uh, under When Hate Meets Love. And it's an image shot in 1979 after the KKK rally in downtown Dallas. And I had a police radio scanner in my car, and first thing I heard, uh, we are escorting the clans leader back to the police station for protection. So I went down the police station and sort of behind a bush. I didn't really want them to see me. But then when she got out of the car, she dropped her hood or whatever they call it. And uh, this African American man just happened to be walking by and he didn't see me. And I just sort of jumped out and started shooting. And when he, he handed it to her, and she had this startled look on her face like, do you know who I am? Even though she didn't say it, it was on her face. Mm -hmm. So he handed it to her, and she just looked at him, and he kept walking. So I chased him down the street because I always had to get names, got his name, and my question was, do you know who she is? And, and why did you hand it back to her? His first answer was, it was the right thing to do. And then he said, yeah, I was downtown. And I saw them marching, and I was just on my way home. And, you know, she got out of the car. And at first, I didn't know who it was. Well, she was, once when her hood dropped, he knew who it was. Wow. You have covered the remarkable joy of sports. You have covered an incredible tragedy that we've talked about. At any point of the tens of thousands of assignments, have you ever just Put down your camera, stop shooting to just soak in what you were seeing through your lens. Yes, it's, there's been several. Uh, 
I was in Israel at Bethlehem, uh, just covering people on the street. Then all of a sudden, there's riot broke out, and the Israeli so, uh, soldiers shot and killed an 18 year old Palestinian. Oh. So, like what's going on today? But uh, in their religion, they have to bury their dead like before sundown, and and they wouldn't. The group wasn't breaking up, so the Israelis got a helicopter and dropping rocks on everyone to disperse them. And and after that happened, uh, I just found some place to go to cool off, and and I just started thinking about it. And, and that's hard. I mean, when you're in a what we call a new situation, it can be the hurricane, it can be the Mexico City earthquake. Uh, yeah, it, it does affect you, but you've got to put it in another department. David Wu's third book, Wu, The Decisive Moment, is literally out as we speak. Uh, could you give us a thumbnail idea of what Wu, The Decisive Moment, entails? Well, uh, I think a lot of photojournalists or photographers, they encounter... They always want to get like the peak decisive moment. And it's got a broad definition. I looked it up years ago. And it's like, I give you an example. When the KKK lady got out of the car and the gentleman walked by, and I went back, processed my film, I looked at it, I go, that's the decisive moment. Your book spans 42 years of shooting photos. Right. You've had 29,000 assignments. Do you have any idea the number of pictures you've taken in your lifetime? Well, I try to do the math on that, and it's I, I took 42 years, and I figure out the weeks per year, then multiply that by 42, but I took off two weeks of vacation and whatever. So it, it came down to thousands and thousands of images. Oh, it had to be. It had to be. It might be millions. Yeah. Because uh, digital, you shoot more than you would with film. Mm -hmm. Because it's indefinite. I mean, you never run out. Mm -hmm. uh, David Wu has a book signing for Wu the Decisive Moment Saturday at Star Power. That's the huge audio video store on the North Tollway. He'll be there from 11 to 5. In fact, I'll join him at noon at Star Power. As, as your career has progressed, have you ever looked back at events and thought, I could have done better at that event? Yes. It, unfortunately, it has happened a lot over 42 years. I, I sort of, when I go into an assignment, I was taught in uh, journalism photography school at UT that when you look through your frame, you let your eye go around the viewfinder, top, side, bottom, and I always try to get uh, unusual angles and make sure nothing's protruding out of people's heads. Yeah. But, but even at a cowboy game, I would miss something. It really upset me. You know, because I said I should have been in focus. The autofocus cameras didn't always get it focused. True. That true. is the truth. I take that from a, a photography techno dummy also. You, you've been in a lot of dangerous places in your career. Yes. Was there a moment you remember that you were really scared? Yes. Uh, back in 1984, I was in... Oh, El Salvador, Nicaragua, and I, I was kidnapped with a Newsweek photographer, and they were young rebels, and they they just like jumped out of their cars, one of those trucks you see with guns on it, and they said, where are you going? And I told them we're going to, I didn't speak Spanish, but the guy did, he says, we're going to a refugee camp. He goes, no, you're not, you're coming with us. And I started getting really worried. Uh, I didn't know what was gonna happen. And they took us for like 16, 18 hours in the jungle and started going through my wallet. I, I told the Newsweek, I said, tell them they could keep my cameras, they can have whatever. They took my bulletproof vest, right? No big deal. And they took my boots. Your boots? Yeah. 
yeah, hey, give me those boots. It's like in a movie or something. Of course, I'm not going to say anything. Like, no, you can't have them when they have guns. Uh, so, you know, how long were you the barefoot photographer? Uh, until I got back in the city and I had to go buy some like tennis shoes or something. Uh, uh, hey, David, thank you. Thank you. Let's luck with the book, Woo with the Decisive Moment. I look forward to seeing you Saturday. Me too. Thank you. Just Wondering with Norm Hitzkus is brought to you by Fluent Financial, Owahill Roofing, and Goodness Steak Seasoning. Look for links in the description. Just Wondering is a production of BSP Media for Fanstream Sports. You can find Norm's show along with other great programming at fanstreamsports.com.